Hey guys, Handyman Kevin here. The totally random project for today is how to deal with excessively large magnets. Uh, you might wonder how I came up with that. Actually, a local branch library contacted me. They have this little device which they use to uh, open and close the DVD cases. I guess they want to, you know, the DVD cases latch so that uh, patrons can't steal discs out of them. And they uh, put them through this to unlock them. Unfortunately, they had a substitute librarian and she thought it was removable from the desk, but it wasn't. And she yanked really hard and it came apart. And the uh, giant magnets that go inside it went all over the floor. And um, then they called the company and they said, well, you could probably get those magnets apart with a magnet separator. But you know, it costs hundreds of dollars. So really, you should just buy another device. Uh, at which point, smart librarians, they contacted me, Handyman Kevin, and I said, magnet separator? Come on. What do you think two by fours are for? So today, I'm going to show you how to separate some magnets with a two by four. Now, I just have this sort of arbitrarily sized chunk of 2x4. Uh, and it's going to be like a big scissors to uh, take apart those magnets. But because the scissors, I need it in two pieces. So I got my trusty uh, circular saw. Make sure it's at right angles because I've been cutting doors for other segments. Okay, so I'm just going to cut this 2x4 in half. In half, yep. Just like that. I didn't measure really. It's got two pieces though, so we're good. Uh, and now, I'm going to need to make pockets in the 2x4 to accept the magnet. How do I do that? Well, I don't know. Uh, hole saws sound good. So, I've got my trusty one and a half inch hole saw, my two inch, or I'm sorry, my half inch drill. You can do this with an ordinary drill, but um, hole saws put a lot of work on it, so probably you want to use the beefiest drill you have anytime that you're hole sawing. So, that's all ready to go. So, I'm going to go and I'm going to make a uh, First pocket goes all the way through. Sure it does. So I'm going to start far enough from the end that it won't split and drill a nice uh, one and a half inch hole. Oh, yeah. There's a hammer drill. Oh, if I had a nickel for every time I did that. Okay, it's on drill drill now. You can kind of brace the 2x4 against your hips so it doesn't spin uncontrollably. Oh, this hole saw is quite thick enough for a 2x4. So, take my trusty awl, I'm going to put it down the middle, and I poke. And, uh, okay, and I see the hole, so I can go from the other side. Separation. See. And now we can almost get that with our hands. Not quite. These are these are crazy powerful magnets. They actually had them wrapped in all this plastic and stuff just so they wouldn't like attract the metal in the car that took them over here. These are pretty serious. So, but halfway there. Now we just make one more hole in the other piece. 
know how it keeps switching over to hammer drill. I really don't. scissors. How do we do that? Well, I don't know. You know, I like to, I like to keep piles of resources in the shop. So I've got this, this random scrap of um, half inch conduit. And I think that would make a pretty good pivot. So all we need to do is drill a hole that will be the right size for that. Okay. Dig around my drill bag. I've got this spade bit. Looks about the right size. Don't really need to be precision for this class of work. Okay, take the pulse saw out. Put the spade bit in. Okay, you need to think about your fulcrum a little bit. You want it to be closer to the magnet hole than to the handle. So. I don't know, probably probably up around here. Be good, like maybe four inches from the magnet hole. That sounds plausible anyway. It's kind of neat. Oh. Hanks just totally magnetized my drill shark. That's the annoying thing about super high powerful magnets. Okay, but you can stick the magnets in the hole, they'll hold the um, the boards together while you drill. Pick a hole for your fulcrum about five inches off the magnet hole. Drill it. What? I just recovered my workbench, so I'm gonna put a piece of board under it so I don't show up the top. Yeah, my workbench was really chewed up before, so I didn't worry about it, but now I got this scrap of OSB I can use. Set things on while I'm drilling. Save my workbench a little bit. Sack these spade bits from Harbor Freight didn't cost me much at all. You know, it's, it's low tech. No reason to spend a lot of money on something like a spade bit. There we go. Okay. So, got the hinge hole, pivot hole there. Just gonna take this and uh, sort of measure. How are we gonna do that? Sharpie marker. I'm going to leave about uh, a good three eighths, half an inch to play with, and then many ways to cut conduit. You can use a hacksaw. You can use a uh, tubing cutter. You can use a uh, reciprocating saw. All good. But since each pretty equivalent and I have my angle grinder with the cutoff disc really handy. I think I'll just use that. These little four inch angle grinders sure are handy. Um, it's, it's basically the only metalworking specific power tool I have, part of the power tool. And I use it all the freaking time. Okay? 
So I'm just going to cut that off. There is our pivot pin. I uh, made a pivot for a trebuchet, kind of a giant medieval catapult one time, out of two inch water pipe. And it worked great using the same sort of technique. You know, that's, that's why it's good to have a portfolio of projects, so you, um, you have stuff to draw on for projects. Yeah. So I'm just going to, uh, oh, get that relatively centered. Relatively, you know. Uh, oh, where is it? I'm going to use my pry bar as a peening plate, clutch plate, just so I have something really hard to back that up against. And now I'm just going to take a ball peen hammer and peen the end of this all over so it sticks in the hole. I don't know how it'll work. I've never done this before exactly like this. Cross beam hammer. I like it. Whatever. separate those magnets. And it's just as simple as that. And I'll just take those suckers apart very carefully so they don't stick to things. Put them back into this little plastic video. Oh, there's one off. And uh, be a hero to a bunch of librarians, which I kind of enjoy. Okay, well, Hope that's helpful. If you ever have gigantically powerful magnets which you need to separate, then um, now you know how to do it. So, uh, till then, have a good day. I'm Handyman Kevin, signing off. Bye.